Okay, welcome to Inkle Weaving Tutorial Part 4. And here we're going to talk about um, a few things. We're going to talk about changing the weft, or uh, adding more weft when you've run out, like I have here. Uh, we're going to talk about how to move uh, your inkle once you've, you've gotten to a point where it's becoming difficult to weave up here. And we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening to my, my loom here, as you can see. Uh, Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our weft. Um, I have pretty much ratched this piece of cardboard, so at this point you can choose to, you know, cut a new piece of cardboard like this, uh, and uh, or you can keep using the same one if it's not really badly busted. Another option is I found this, uh, it's a yarn bob, and I think it's meant for intarsia weaving. But I found it at a at a wool shop near me. It's Susan Bates. I don't know if uh, if there's a unif like a uniform shape that happens cross brands, but um, I like this because it can double as your straight edge. Uh, so I'm going to use this, but you're free to just wrap some more on. So all you need to do is just wind on a bunch more. Uh, it's, I feel like it's best to not to wind on, to wind on too little instead of too much. Once you've got um, a good chunk of, uh, of your, your weft color wound on, just cut it and give yourself a tail and you can see here where I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep weaving it until there's next to nothing left I'm just going to uh, I've come through from the left to the right on shed one which means my open threads are up now what I want to do is I came from left to right I want to mirror that on the same shed uh, left to right with the open threads up, the same shed, it's still, you can see it's still loose in there. I'm going to follow it with the new thread and leave another tail. Okay, and then I'm going to change the shed, beat, and you can choose to, to take this tail thread and wrap it through this same opening just to tie it off, but you really don't need to. You can just, once you've overlapped them for one row and, and changed the shed and beat down, you should just be able to leave it. Okay, so now um, right away you can just trim both of these tails off right up close to the warp and uh, they're not going to unravel on you or anything. And you just continue weaving in the same fashion as you have been. Now. Uh, the other thing that's happening right now is that I'm getting really close to my heddles and it's becoming really increasingly difficult uh, to manipulate these threads and get my shuttle through, especially when it's the cardboard shuttle and you've, you're saving the shed with this, it gets difficult. So we're just going to leave our shuttle over here, take our ruler out, and we're going to pull out the tension bar at the back and you can pull it out almost all the way there, leave it, and it's just hanging back there. All you need to do is you can grab it anywhere. I like to grab it down here on the already woven part. And just pull, and you want to leave, I'd say about that much, on the bottom. Okay? Now you're going to push this gently back, grab it with your tension bar, and then I just push this side of my tension bar until it goes into the hole, okay? And now I take my fingers and I straighten my heddles. Now you can, this, this isn't a good place to talk about this. What's happening here is as I weave, especially if I'm, you don't want to beat down extremely tightly on every row because the tighter you beat down, the more you're, you're sucking up this warp thread or this warp as you, it, closes in on itself with every row that you beat because these threads are interlocking like this and when they do that it takes up extra. So 
what it's doing is it's putting a lot of tension on this piece of cardboard here. This is the weakest point of the loom. It's the thinnest area where you cut. Uh, and after three quarters of my band, it's really, like it was doing it even right in the beginning, but now it's really starting to sort of curve up. And and as you weave it, it's going to put a lot of pressure on this. Keep sucking it up. So, like I said um, before, uh, in my first, like when I, when we were building this loom, I said that these are temporary. These are only really to get an idea of whether or not you really enjoy the process. Uh, and if you do, I highly recommend investing in a small wooden loom or a large one. Large ones are great because they give you the opportunity to weave a greater distances. Um, I think that they're beautiful, uh, especially when they're threaded up with a with a lovely project, and you know you can let it, you can pick it up whenever you want, and in the meantime, it's a beautiful display piece. So I'm just gonna finish weaving to the end, and I'll show you how to cut it off.